an important property of the atmosphere is how dense is the gas um, at any given point. It's called atmospheric density. And actually, atmospheric density is directly related to atmospheric pressure. And we'll be kind of talking more about that. But in general, we say we can determine the density of an object if we isolate some of that object, um, calculate its mass, and calculate its volume, and do a little ratio. So it's usually a ratio of mass to volume. That's and density is basically kind of how cram-packed mass is into a certain volume. So if something is very dense, that means it has a lot of mass for a small amount of volume. If something is not very dense, then that means for a given volume, there's not much mass there. So density is kind of how much uh, matter is, is crammed or not crammed into a location. And generally speaking, in the atmosphere, we, and I'm going to kind of show you a column of, of the atmosphere where down here is the Earth's surface and up here is the edge of the, of the Earth's atmosphere. Generally speaking, um, if we were to look at the gas particles down here near the Earth's surface, they are more tightly packed. The atmosphere down here, we say, is denser than the atmosphere up here. And it probably makes um, sense to you, for instance, um, if you've ever heard, if you go mountain climbing, um, the air is going to get thinner as you go up in elevation. As you go up vertically, the air gets thinner. It's, the air is more sparse. It's less dense up there. And so this is kind of a nice little figure. You see uh, down here, this would be, let me draw a few things in here. Down here we have, um, this is the Earth's surface. Okay. And you can kind of see the cute little, these would be gas particles. You can see how they're tightly, they're crammed together near the Earth's surface. And this would be going up in elevation. So if you go ahead and kind of superimpose a mountain here, can you see as, as you climb the mountain, the air is getting thinner and thinner. The air is getting less dense. And you can kind of think of that as a, as a couple of different reasons. but. One of the things, remember, that these gas particles I'm showing here are hanging around the Earth. They're part of the Earth system to make up the Earth's atmosphere because of gravity. Okay, gravity is making those gas particles um, uh, stick around instead of floating off into inter to outer space. Um, the other thing is gases, unlike, well, liquids to a certain extent, but solids, gases are not. Um, gases are what we say compressible. And so if you um, add together the fact that the gravity is stronger here near the Earth's surface, okay, stronger gravity, so we're going to have more uh, matter, gas particles there, and the fact that air is compressible so that if you kind of take a column of air, you know, um, this, um, this air down here basically has the weight of all that air up there, whereas this air right here only has the weight of that air. Okay, and there's a compressible feature to gas. Um, all gas, um, all matter is in motion, but gases like this are going way fast. So, and we'll talk more about that, but when you think of gas particles, remember that most of the gas in our atmosphere are nitrogen molecules, but just think of them as going way fast, okay? Motion, gas, all matters in motion, but gases have the most amount of motion, just banging around. So actually, when we talk about gas creating a pressure, it's kind of that is what's going on. The gases are, the gas particles are banging around. So we can kind of change the pressure that a gas exerts by two things. One is we can change the number of gas particles that we have for a given volume. Um, a case in point is if you have a deflated balloon and you start filling up your balloon, your first, uh, your first breathful of, of air kind of makes it, you know, fills it up a little bit. Your next breathful of air fills it up this way. Okay, next breathful of air. What you're doing actually is taking gas and increasing the number of gas particles in your balloon. So let's just say you kind of get to the capacity or the latex of your balloon's not going to extend anymore. 
If you keep blowing, you're blowing more and more gas particles in your balloon. And can you almost kind of feel the pressure increase? And so what you're feeling are those little gas particles bouncing, trying to get out. I think that's neat. Another way, quite frankly, that we can change the, um, the, the pressure exerted by a gas, like we're seeing here, is to change, its, to change how fast it's moving. And the way we change how fast it's moving, I'll go ahead and put it up here in case it's not up here. The way we do that is by um, changing its temperature. Okay, And we'll talk more about this, too. But if, if gas particles are hot, they're moving way fast, and they exert a high pressure. Okay, As we cool a gas down, it moves slower and slower, and it creates it's less of a pressure. So kind of as I've drawn this figure here, or I didn't draw it, but as this figure is here, up there at the top, like if you climb a mountain, it's lower density, okay, lower gas pressure. And we would say the atmospheric pressure at upper elevations, the pressure of the atmosphere is less. The pressure of the nitrogen, oxygen, argon, carbon dioxide, water vapor is less. And compare that down to lower elevations near sea level or below sea level. Look how densely packed those particles are. High pressure, high density, high barometric pressure. So this is a, uh, a good figure. And what you're looking at is down here along the x-axis, we have pressure pressure and we have different units of, of talking about pressure, the pressure of the gas particles. For our tires, we talk about gas pressure in terms of pounds per square inch or PSI. That's talking about when you inflate your tires. Here in meteorology we talk about a pressure oftentimes in units of millibars, MBs. So here we see at sea level or so we have Mount Everest drawn in there. At sea level or so, we tend to have, in terms of millibars, about 1,000 millibars pressure. And what this is saying is, as you go up in altitude or elevation, okay, notice that the barometric pressure or the pressure, atmospheric pressure, goes down. So that's what this red line is. Okay, so that's why they're showing here at top of Mount Everest. Notice it's already drawn in about 314 millibars. It kind of corresponds here on the x-axis, about 314. See how that works. And actually, this semester, you guys have a homework problem, a couple of homework problems. I think it's question number five for chapter one. And it looks at, it says, um, how many more breaths would you need to take up here at a pressure of 300 millibars compared to down here at the higher density pressure of 1,000 millibars. I'll just go ahead and tell you the answer. It's about, can you see where it's about a factor of three times less when you're on top of Mount Everest, the, the pressure in millibars, than it is down at sea level. So if it's that much thinner, three times, or a third, uh, um, it's a third of. So you have to take three breaths. So that's the answer. The other question has to do with if you were at um, 12 kilometers, the other part of that same question, part B, if you were at 12 kilometers, um, broadly speaking, how much of the Earth's atmosphere is below you? And the answer is 80%. I'll just go ahead and tell you. Okay, and that has to do with the fact that here we have about 200 millibars um, pressure. And if we compare 200 millibars to 1,000 millibars, that's about... 20%, so that means we have about 80% below us.